Hey folks, let's walk through how to get started with Spark.net. If you don't know, Spark.net is an open source framework built on top of ASP.net and Entity Framework and extends their capabilities, enabling you to build feature-rich web applications quickly. It's a great starting point for your next SaaS or side project. Let's get started. Now the first step will be heading over to the uh, spark-framework.net documentation site and heading over to the installation page and you'll want to make sure you have the Entity Framework core tools installed. Once you do that, you'll need to install, this, install the spark.cli package. Then you'll need to install the spark templates with spark install. And at this point we can create our first project. Now you'll see here we have two templates that were installed. We have a Blazor and an MVC and we can create those by running the spark new and then the name of the application and then blazor is the default if you want to create an mvc app you can type dash dash type or dash t nvc and then there's also three different css frameworks you can start with your project you can use tailwind bootstrap or pico css you can specify those with the dash dash css or dash c parameter and then the name of the CSS package. Uh, Tailwind is the default so we'll just leave it at and this will create our project in the, with the MVC framework template. We can go ahead and CD into our app and then run the spark open command to open it with Visual Studio. Now all Spark projects come with a pretty similar uh, project structure. You'll have your controllers and your databases, your models, etc. And then you also have, for MVC, you'll have your views folder. And then for Blazor, you'll have your pages folder for your Razor components, or in this case, our uh, Razor pages. And then as you can see, we already have several pages scaffolded. That's because Spark comes with authentication and user dashboards and a home page already constructed for you and it also comes with your authentication controller and your user models as well so speaking of models the first thing that needs to be done in a spark project is create and run our migrations uh, spark projects do use entity framework so we have our users and our roles models already so we need to put those into our database um, if we check out our env file here we'll see our database connection uh, values stored here uh, our db connection decides what kind of database we're using uh, by default it's sqlite but you can use mysql and a couple others we'll keep it with sqlite just to keep this demo simple but heading back to our spark cli we can run the spark make migration and then the name of the migration We'll just call it initial and we'll hit that hit enter and then once that's done we'll see our migration files here in our migrations folder all right there they are now we can apply those migrations to our database by running the spark spark migrate command All right, and then we should, since we're using SQLite, we should see our spark.db file here, which is our SQLite file. All right, at this point, our, our app's ready to run, so we can either run uh, the .NET watch command, or we can just start our uh, app in Visual Studio. We'll go ahead and do the latter. All right. So as you can see, uh, go ahead and check out this markup. We are using Tailwind CSS. Like I said, you can also use Bootstrap or Pico. And uh, we'll go ahead and register a new user. So let's call it my name, add a password, and confirm our password, and create our account. All right. Now we have access to our user dashboard here. And we can also head home or we can log out. It also comes uh, with mobile menus. Uh, so yeah, pretty much everything you need for your next SaaS or 
side project. We'll go ahead and log out and just to verify, we'll head back to that user's dashboard page and we can't access it. It takes us back to the login page. That's because we are using the authorize attribute here. There's also an admin <clears throat> dashboard. So Spark comes with user roles out of the box. Uh, there are two user roles it comes with, the admin and then just a normal user. So if you have an admin section of your app, you can go ahead and put things here and use the authorize and then set the policy to the admin and then only users with that role will be able to access it. Cool. So that's the MVC uh, set up there. Uh, just real quick, we'll go ahead and do the uh, Blazor portion as well. So we'll go ahead and back out of uh, the My App folder, and let's let's delete My App. Now we'll run the Spark new. We'll call it My App again since we deleted it. And this time we're not going to specify a type since we're we want it to be Blazor, and that's the default. But we will specify a different CSS framework. So we'll go ahead and do Bootstrap. Okay, CD into my app and run Spark open again. All right, so this time you can see we have a slightly different folders. For instance, there's no controllers folder since we're dealing with Blazor. And then we have a pages folder where our Razor components reside. And as you can see, it's using the typical uh, Razor at code block. And we're also using Bootstrap instead of Tailwind CSS this time. So let's go ahead and once again run uh, Spark Make Migration. And we'll do the Spark migrate command all right and then go ahead and start our app and as you can see we're using bootstrap this time we'll go ahead and register a new user All right, and now watch the navigation. Since we're using Blazor server this time, we can go to the dashboard. There's no page reload. reload. Same with headed back home, and uh, we can log out. Yeah, and that has it. So uh, there's a lot more to Spark besides just what we showed today, but this is kind of how to get a project up and running. Uh, the docs are very thorough, so go ahead and head over here. You can check out all of the other features that come with the framework, things like authentication, authorization, logging, mail, events, queues, background jobs and task scheduling, and all of the different Spark CLI commands that come with the framework. Cool. Check it out. Thanks.